Thanks, Andrew. And we're talking about the automotive logistics industry, automotive sales. And today on our shipper slash economy update, talking about non-defense goods sales, right? Goods orders. Tell me what's going on, Anthony. Exactly. So non-defense capital goods new orders is a part of the report that the Census Bureau puts out. And we're looking at non-defense capital goods new orders. It's a mouthful. <laughs> Full thing would be non-defense capital goods new orders, excluding aircraft. Oof. I know. <laughs> so when we're looking at it, it's pretty much indicative of business to business activity right. and what's going on with capital expenditure spending. And what we've seen is a 2.3% month to month increase. And we're also seeing double digit year over year growth wow. in non defense capital goods new orders. So we have this amazing sonar chart behind us. And so when we're looking at this chart. We're seeing non defense capital goods new orders in the blue line here, which is extremely elevated. Um, as of late, as we've seen from April up to now. And in the orange line, we have, of course, our flatbed outbound tender rejection index, which looks at capacity for flatbed trailer types. And so that's going to be the main trailer type to haul some of these manufactured goods. But when we're looking at the durable goods, it's going to really span the gamut from toasters, anything that has a shelf life of three years or more, all the way to aircraft. And so we take out aircrafts, we take out defense goods spending because those are a lot more volatile. When we're looking at core capital goods spending, we're seeing some elevated rates. So it's showing that there is indeed some demand for these business capital goods expenditures. Mm -hmm. So when you look at this chart, you would think, oh my gosh, both of those lines are trending in the positive direction. That's good. But it's not, right? Because you've got Ochai that's going up along with these this demand for these orders. So people are ordering more things. They need more capacity to haul it, but it's just not there, correct? That's right. So capacity is tightening and it doesn't just end at some of those businesses, but it also goes into some of those consumers as well. So looking at the entire stream of durable goods, we're seeing that demand shortage across the board, not just within um, certain smaller segments of manufacturing, but widespread. Of course, we just had Trent on talking about the shortages and semiconductors, and that's going to be impacting automobiles, but other sorts of technology as well. We're looking at home appliances. Right. There's commodity shortages there. We're looking at furniture. Um, that's going to be into the durable goods segment as well. That's going to also feed into a lot of the shortages that's happening. A lot of these manufacturers and business owners within these production facilities are talking about the shortages in labor. That's also driving up costs in addition to those commodity prices. Right. So I just talked on my podcast yesterday with Dusty Dean, and we talked about how manufacturers kind of need to keep up with the way that consumers are now buying and shopping and how it's kind of this dichotomy between those who are willing to adapt to what's going on and those who really aren't. How much of that adaptation or that lack of adaptation would you say is kind of contributing to this fact of maybe manufacturers are just not able to keep up with how consumers are buying today? That's a huge part of it. Manufacturers aren't able to keep up. And a lot of it's just going to be, of course, a carryover from COVID, but I think we're almost at a point in time where people are going to be sick and tired of hearing difficulties right. from COVID and it's just going to be, all right, adjust, get to it. And I think manufacturing is going to be one of those areas. I mean, we're looking at a lot more employees. We've always talked about employment every Thursday, of course, and my skepticism around it, but there is some demand for employment throughout across the board, throughout the nation, especially within manufacturing. Right. And so that's going to be one of the biggest issues with for a lot of those shippers within those upstream areas for manufacturing is finding enough employees to really supply that labor mm -hmm. to make these products after they even get that adequate uh, supply of commodities. And so that's an upstream impact that's going to really spread to downstream. And that's, of course, going to have some inflated prices as those price increases continue to increase. But we also have Americans throughout the country sitting on a substantial amount of savings. I think the latest figure was somewhere in the three trillion mark across wow. the board throughout the entire country. So there's a substantial amount of savings that Americans are sitting on. Some that's going to, of course, be looking at that everly growing housing market. But mm -hmm. of course, manufacturing going to be a beneficiary from that as well. So of course, as the world opens up again, people are going to start traveling more, going to start spending that money on taking trips instead. But also there is still that wiggle room of, hey, I have this extra cash. Let me put it into my house. Let me put it into my furniture. Let me put it in to start buying Christmas presents already because we are only in June. It's June 2nd, but we're already looking at possibly some stress on things as we're getting into Christmas orders, right? Exactly. We're always talking about that pull forward throughout these seasonality trends, and that's going to likely be another pull forward. So. Get started on that Christmas shopping, <laughs> Christmas in July. I don't even want to think about it. I don't like Christmas shopping when it comes to regular Christmas shopping, much less do I want to have to think about Christmas shopping right now. <laughs> it's coming up, it's upon us, and who knows, Amazon might have one of those mid-year uh, holiday e-commerce sales, mm -hmm. and 
we'll be sure to see a lot more other e-commerce um, outlets to follow. And we'll be watching that here every day on Freight Waves Now.